Well, good morning, Lake Grove. The apple doesn't fall far from the tree in a lot of ways. Uh, Greg commented, Dad had one of these just like this. Uh, and like Dad, I write my notes and, uh, gotcha, Pastor Z. I write them so I know what I'm going to say, so I can be prepared. But I couldn't ahead of time write the brief, I need to keep it brief, introductory words. I knew I had to kind of get here and feel what I wanted to say as a word, uh, a personal word to you. And it is simply what came to my heart this morning is I am who I am in large measure because you are who you are. So much of who I am as a human, as a follower of Jesus Christ, and as a pastor is because of what the people of this church sewed into the very fabric of my soul for so many years. So thank you for being who you are. And now let's get to the word. We're going to read today from the passage comes to us from a book of Hebrews, chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. It says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely. And let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, who for the sake of the joy that was set before him endured the cross, disregarding its shame, and has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of God. God, pour out your blessing on the proclamation and the hearing of your word. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be pleasing to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Lake Grove Presbyterian Church, on the occasion of your 100th birthday, here's what I want to say to you. You have a race that is set before you. You have a race that is yours to run. For what is true of every individual human being is also true of every church. God created each one uniquely. God has shaped each one throughout its life with unique experiences and circumstances. God has endowed and developed within each church unique talents and skills. And God has allowed unique hardships and challenges to grow it. This is true of you, Lake Grove Presbyterian. So, of course, God has set before you a race that is unique to you. 100 years ago, God saw fit to call a faithful band of Christ followers to come and plant a church here in the heart of Lake Grove. They planted this church so that God might be exalted by people coming to know and follow Jesus Christ, receiving God's saving love for them and being transformed by it. They planted this church that men and women and, and children and students of every age might be equipped to become faithful, devoted disciples of Jesus Christ. They planted this church that Christ's love might be extended in word and in deed from places like Lake Oswego to the Tualatin Valley from Tijuana to Central America, from Senegal to Zambia to Bangladesh and beyond, or perhaps as Jesus put it, from Jerusalem to Judea to Samaria to the ends of the earth. Lake Grove Presbyterian Church, you have a race that is set before you, a race that is yours to run. And as you run it, you have got an entire stadium filled with fans who are cheering you on. 
This passage we just read begins with the words, therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses. I'll clue you in on a really uh, easy but important biblical scholarship tool. Whenever you are reading your Bible, if you come across this word, therefore, a really easy question to ask yourself is, what is this therefore, there for? <laughs> it's a good question to ask. It's going to always will lead you to greater insights. And this particular therefore is there for the purpose of pointing back to something really important that the author of Hebrews has just said. This cloud of witnesses has just been listed all throughout Hebrews 11. When you go home and you're reading your Bible later, you can flip back a page and read this list of different names, people of faith who have come before us, people whose lives and stories stand as testimonies for us. They ran the race that was set before them. There's Abel who gave God his best. Noah, who lived according to a promise he could not see. Abraham, who gave back to God the promise that God had given to him, and so many more like them. And now, having passed on to glory, they're up in the stands, rooting for us, encouraging us, praying for us as we run the race that is set before us. And while the writer of Hebrews didn't know these names in order to be able to list them, we certainly know that there are many in Lake Grove's cloud of witnesses who I imagine are cheering the very loudest. There's Mrs. C.A. Johnson. I have no idea who she is, but I know that her name is recorded on a list of the people who first gave money to buy this parcel of land on which this church stands. Mrs. Johnson's name is listed there, and they give the amounts that everyone gave, and hers is the least. Mrs. Johnson gave $3. And I imagine her, uh, somewhat like the widow, whom Jesus observed giving two small, small coins into the treasury. And Jesus said, no, she's the one who gave the very most. So I imagine Mrs. C.A. Johnson standing and holding up a sign as we run by saying, give it all you've got. There's Lake Grove's first ever choir director, Velma Ewell. Her sign says, make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. There's Evie Andrews, who taught Sunday school in this church for over 50 years. Her sign just says the words of Jesus, let the little children come to me. There's Paul Stewart, who served as an usher for so many Sundays, year after year, Sunday after Sunday, worship service after worship service, that man must have handed out a million bulletins. <laughs> and so I imagine him standing there with his 100-watt smile, holding a sign that says, make everybody feel welcome. There's Don Pope offering wise counsel as you run by. Howie Willis gathering the men together for fellowship. Kathy Williams sending the women out to serve. There's Woody Knauss and Dale Vandewall going out to drive the bus to pick up any stragglers that might be falling behind. There's Nam Luong holding out a cup of coffee in case you need a boost. And of course you know that in that great cloud of witnesses in that big old cheering section that surrounds us, there is my dad. You know him as Pastor Bob. And because it's my sermon, he gets two signs. <laughs> One of them says what you heard him say so many times. Keep the main thing, the main thing. But the second one is just as true. The best is yet to come. Lake Grove Presbyterian Church, you have a race that is set before you. It is your race 
to run. So run it with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. You can run it. You can and you will because Jesus ran his. Jesus ran his. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. We got into our feelings there for a little bit. Now we're going to get a little silly, okay? And I know we're Presbyterians, but I know you can do this, all right? So get ready. <laughs> Show of hands, whoever read the book or, or, or knows the song, there's going on a lion hunt. Do you know what this is? You know, lion hunt. Sometimes it's a bear hunt. We know this. Okay. I'm going to need you to help me out with this a little bit. Uh, you need a little this going on. Choir, you have rhythm, so thanks for taking the lead. It's a, it's a repeat after me thing. Come on, congregation. I don't see everybody doing it. Come on. Going on a lion hunt. Gonna catch a big one. I'm not afraid. Cause we're all together. It didn't hurt that much, did it? Okay, good. All right. So those of you, again, you know, uh, when you go on a lion hunt, part of the process is you encounter obstacles. There are tall trees, there are swishy grasses, there are large lakes, and every time you encounter an obstacle, well, we can do it one more time. Can't go over it. Can't go under it. Can't go around it. Have to go through it. All right, give yourselves a hand. You did it. It is true in lion hunts, and it is true in life. There are challenges. There are hardships. There are trials that we cannot avoid. We can't go over, under, or around them. We have to go through them. Most human beings I know are not particularly fond of this reality. We don't like the idea that there are some experiences in life, particularly the painful ones, that are unavoidable, inescapable. Because if we're honest, we'd like our life to be easy rather than hard. We'd rather feel happy than sad, content than mad, peaceful than anxious, we would prefer a suffering-free life. If that's you, even just a little bit, I am very sorry to have to be the one to tell you that it doesn't exist. M. Scott Peck, back in the 1970s, wrote a book called The Road Less Traveled. This was one of those books that was probably in the bookstore placed in what we know as the self-help section. The section where people go when they're looking for help, obviously, they're trying to find a book or a guide or a program or something that they can do that's going to help them get them through it. You know, give me a, a program, give me a checklist, give me the thing that's going to make all this painful stuff go away. So anybody who picked up M. Scott Peck's book was probably sorely disappointed when they opened it up and read the first words that simply say, life is difficult. It just is. Life is difficult. Now, there's some of you who might be here saying, well, ha, 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 but we're in a church. We've got Jesus. It's different. I mean, I know there's people out there who are suffering, people out there for whom life is difficult. But when you have faith in Jesus, if you ask Jesus into your heart, it's supposed to be anyway that all pain and suffering and hardship go, go that goes away. And, and, and truly, if you just can muster up enough faith in Jesus, then you can have a suffering free life. <laughs> My friends, 
especially that part about if you can just have enough faith in Jesus, then your life's going to get easy. I need to tell you that that is a lie from the pit of hell. That is a lie. That is a lie, 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 lie. And you want to know how I know it? I know it because Jesus said it. Jesus said that in this world you will have what? Trouble. Tribulation, I heard somebody say. Suffering. Jesus said in this world you will have trouble. Jesus knew that life is difficult. Jesus knew that this was true for every human being that has ever lived on this planet. You can't go over it. You can't go under it. You can't go around it. You got to go through it. Jesus knew that this was true, but Jesus also knew that we would never have to go through it alone. As we run the race that is set before us, as we are being cheered on by this cloud of witnesses that surround us, we are called to fix our eyes not on ourselves, not on the race, not even on that crowd. We are called to fix our eyes on Jesus the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, who for the sake of the joy that was set before him endured the cross, disregarding its shame, and has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of God. We are not running this race alone. Jesus is running ahead of us all the time, but especially when the race gets hard, Jesus is right there with us. And here's where this is really important. This is where the gospel is really coming in. Because another passage in scripture, Philippians 2, it tells us that though Jesus existed in the form of God. He did not regard equality with God as something to be grasped, but he emptied himself. Jesus took on the form of a slave, assuming human likeness. And being found in appearance as a human, he humbled himself. He became obedient to the point of death even death on a cross. Here's the uh, Becca revised version of that passage. Because Jesus existed in the form of God, because Jesus was God, Jesus could have gone over it. Jesus could have gone under it. Jesus could have gone around it, but Jesus chose to go through it. Do you hear me, choir? Yes. Jesus chose, my friends, to go through it. Jesus chose to go through it with us. Through all the ordinary problems and pains and struggles and suffering that all of us go through as part of running a race. Jesus chose to go through it with us so we would never run alone. Jesus chose to go through it with us, and Jesus, Jesus chose to go through it for us. Jesus chose to go through it for us through the extraordinary suffering of being killed on a Roman cross, of bearing the weight of the sin of all humanity on his shoulders, of being estranged from the Father on our behalf. Jesus chose to go through that for us so we would never have to. And I know we're Presbyterians here, but can I get an amen? Amen. Jesus ran his race so we can run ours. Lake Grove Presbyterian Church, you have run an excellent race these first 100 years of your life, but you are not done yet. You still have a race to run. So if you will Run it. If you will run it, keeping your eyes fixed on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, I believe it with all my heart. The 
best is yet to come. Jesus, thank you, thank you, thank you for all the lives changed because of the work you are doing through Lake Grove Presbyterian Church. All we can do is respond in joyful praise. So let us do that now. Amen.